Okay, so good afternoon. My name is Rachel Brady, and I worked with um, Legal Aid in Nebraska to develop a form that would help clients file for due process in the state of Nebraska. And due process is kind of a term of art that's used specifically when dealing with um, children who are in special education or who aren't but should be. So a couple of credits. My mentor at Legal Aid in Nebraska was Sheldon Sculpture, and Amanda Plomo is a uh, paralegal there who is extremely helpful. Um, and special thanks to all of our people here who did a wonderful job, including Chris, who literally sat with me for hours and hours while I messed things up on that. So he did, he was really wonderful. Um, so I began, my interest in this field developed while working at Equip for Equality. Equip for Equality is Illinois' protection and advocacy organization. They provide legal services relating to people with disabilities. So I started working there last year and realized that there were a lot of parents who were having trouble with their kids in special education and needed to do this due process, process, um, but didn't know how to do it because it's kind of a daunting task. So in order to find out, and it falls under federal law, so I began researching the due process process under federal law and then moved into Nebraska. Um, I looked at things like publications from the Department of Education in Middle Aid in Nebraska, as well as their statute, which has a lot of the, the notice and filing requirements. Um, there were a couple of law review articles that I found particularly helpful. So the justice problem in this case um, falls under the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, which is IDEA. It's meant to protect all children with disabilities in accessing a free, appropriate public education. But research shows that low-income children are not reaping the same educational benefits as their wealthier counterparts. So just a couple of statistics. Of special ed students, a quarter of them live below the poverty line, and two-thirds, two which is 4.5 million people, live in households with incomes of $50,000 or less. Students tend to ignore students with special education needs if parents aren't there to really effectively advocate for their kids. The poorer school you live in, the less resources the school has, and the less likely your child is to receive the, the services that they really, really need to access their education. So due process a last resort. Parents should be working with the school um, throughout the special education process to develop a plan for their student. But if the school continues to resist or won't give the student the right services or tries to change the student's you know, services or goals or whatever it may be, and the, the parent and the school are no longer able to work together, the, the parent files for due process. So it will then go to an informal or a educative hearing. Um, so it's basically like the parent the due process form, the complaint form, you're not allowed to argue anything that isn't written on the form, so that was something we needed to make very clear in the interview, that once they get to the hearing, if it's not on the form, you can't argue about it. So, before a child can get what's called an individualized education program, an IEP, which helps them get services and accommodations that they need, they need to be evaluated. So somebody needs to go to the school and say, I think my kid actually isn't benefiting from educationally they should be. So you need to evaluate certain domains and figure out where the kid needs special help. Then you identify them as actually needing special education services. You put an IEP in place that has special services, you know, extended time, different goals depending on the child's needs. Um, and then you make them, you give them a placement. So some students might need to place in a self-contained classroom um, with only other students with disabilities. Some other students may be placed in a general education classroom with only a, full, a few pull-out minutes per week. So they'll work with maybe just a speech therapist for 20 minutes a week, something like that. Those are all things that the parent and the school need to work out together. Um, so some things that happen is if the school changes the IEP without notifying the parent, um, there's something called stay put, that if the parent files for due process within 10 days, um, the school can't change the placement. So, um, if the school decides, we want to take this kid out of the general education setting and put him in a self-contained classroom, if the parent files for due process within 10 days, the school is prohibited from doing that until the due process hearing. But otherwise, there's a two-year statute of limitations, so parents have a pretty long time to be able to kind of hash out these issues with the school. So the due process petition is a petition that the parent files to the department, I'm sorry, the Board of Education, the school, um, the school district saying that they're essentially suing the school for not doing what they should be to help the child access a free appropriate public education. So this is a list of um, the requirements that need to go in there, and then those were the things that needed to have on the form. 
form that I created. So basic identifying information, um, the name of the child, the problems that the parent is having, the specific complaints that the parent has, um, the remedies that the parent is seeking, and then a proposed resolution. So what you want the hearing officer, who's like the judge, what you want them to actually do about the situation. So the petition looks like this. It's pretty straightforward, but a lot of times um, parents have many issues going on with the school, and this is something that I learned while working at Equipment for Equality, is parents have a laundry list of complaints, but they don't necessarily want to file for due process over all of them. So they really need to narrow the scope of what they're talking about to address the one problem that appears to be irreconcilable with the school. So the guided interview started off with eligibility. So due process is only an option for parents or legal guardians of students who are either already in special education or who aren't yet but should be when the parent has requested an evaluation and the school has denied to give the child special education services after evaluating them. So the first set of questions, I think probably the first third to half of the questions are just about determining if the due process form is actually the right thing to do at this time. Otherwise, they should go back and talk to the school, ask the school to evaluate the child, and what have you. Um, so, and I, so I wanted to make it easy for the parent to just kind of check off a list of problems that they're having with the school, because a lot of times, they're the same. It's the, the goals that the child has in its IEP aren't correct. That's something that parents see over and over again, but the school won't fix that. Or my kid isn't receiving enough minutes, or my kid is still failing. So I wanted to kind of list those options out first so that a parent could just check them off rather than having to type a long list of specific problems. Um, but I, of course, wasn't able to come up with everything because schools do all kind of crazy things. So I wanted parents to also be able to have space to type in specific concerns if they weren't already listed on one of my check boxes. I also, like I said earlier, had to make it very clear in there that you can't argue about anything that's not on the petition um, and then leave spot for the remedy or the relief that they're requesting. But once you file for due process, there's an extensive number of things that you have to do. It's like going to a trial. So if you're doing it pro se, it's kind of a daunting task. So the client would, or the end user would likely need to have an ongoing relationship with Legal Aid in Nebraska. Um, after they file for due process, they're appointed a hearing officer. They, have, they go to mandatory mediation, they have to produce witness lists, and then they have the hearing. So it's literally like they're being their own attorney in this hearing. Um, so this form is only the beginning of a much longer process, and that was something I wanted to make sure that the, the end user knew about as well. Um, and then the 10 day limitation for state put. Um, that wasn't, it was something I considered actually integrating into the interview, but I think that stay put is kind of another beast altogether. That was the 10 day, if you file it within 10 days, the school can't change the placement. Um, so I decided to make that just a note and that the parent can kind of seek other assistance if that's the case. Um, so then here's the hot dog. It looks like this. Kind of exciting. Chris helped so much with me. So here's my interview. It starts, a lot of it um, kind of begins with explaining what due process is, whether it's the right thing for the parent to be doing at this time. It explains that it's like a lawsuit. Oh no, the variables are in here. Okay, well, here we go. So this is the question, if you're not the parent or legal guardian of the kid who has special educational needs, it'll kick you out right away. So I'm going to say yes. So when I did my test assemble, I thought, we're going to pretend that this is a situation where the kid has an IEP, has an individualized education plan, but there's something that's wrong with it. So I'm going to say yes. The other, the other route that it will take is, no, my kid doesn't have an IEP yet, but I think he should. And then that kind of takes you down a different path in the interview. This is a statute of limitations question. That's the qualification question. So this is the address. There's a provision on the form for homelessness.
Here's a, oh, sorry. The learn more in this case sends the user to a link that has a list of all the public schools. One thing that I found in working with, with parents is that they don't necessarily know the specific address or name of their child's school. Sometimes it has community in it, sometimes it's a west high, sometimes it's a high west, and so this will allow um, parents to look that up directly. So now it gets into the um, kind of the meat of the reason they're filing for due process, and this is the part where it says if you don't talk about it here, you're not allowed to argue about it at all. So I'm saying no, my kid was properly identified as needing special education services. The evaluation was fine. The placement is fine. The kid is in the right classroom. Yeah. So what happens when you go the other way there? Oh, this will just add something. So if I were to say yes, the placement, it'll add something into the form. There's a specific line in the form that says, I have concerns about James placement. And so that would say, there's a part for me to type in. So in this case, and there's learn more for each of those for the specific legal definition. So in this case, I'm just going to say, you know what, I don't think Jane has the right goals. I think that they're not age appropriate for her. What if my problem is on the list? There's a place for me to type my answer. So I'm going to say, I also think Jane needs more um, speech therapy. And then what is that? What do I want the school to do? It I want her to have more age appropriate goals. And more speech. The parent can attach documents if they want to, I'm not going to, but there's a part on the form that will allow them to do that. That's it. There's a lot of steps they need to take after they're done with the form, so this leaves it out. Then it goes through, they'll receive a hearing officer, they're going to trial, they should contact Legal Aid in Nebraska if they have additional questions. So that's it. And then the form itself will populate like this. So it has the name in there a bunch of times. Um, the changes that the school can make in the relief that you're requesting are actually this thing. Um, and then here you have, here are the concerns. It's not the right of, uh, appropriate placement and it's not the least restrictive. Um, which are things that the parent can learn about in specific learning course. And then they can sign and date the bottom and submit. So, are there any questions? Yeah. Maybe the question I asked wasn't at the right time. But you okay. said in the first third there are a series of, of um, tests that you go through to say, is this the right place to be? Yeah. Right? Um, and it sounded like if it were not, that there were different appropriate things to do or places to go. So how do you handle that? So this is, does your child have an IEP? Well, I'm going to say no. My kid doesn't actually have an IEP yet. And no, I don't think my kid should have an IEP. I just think that he needs an after school tutoring. Like, I don't want him to see a special education teacher. Like, I just think he's failing and he shouldn't be. No, an IEP isn't the right thing to do. And then it says, well, actually, this isn't the right thing for you to do at this time. You want to go back and change your answer you can change your answer is it going to help you get that the thing that you want no so this is only for kids who are involved or should be involved in special education so if you don't want your child involved in special education this is not the thing that you should be doing you should talk to this school does that make sense yes um i, I guess what i'm trying to get at is that that um, are you telling them here that they should talk to the school? Oh, I guess I'm not, but I will. You might want to find out if Nebraska yeah. cares about those all those alternate paths that are not chosen if you yeah. get through your project. So it says, I think it says in one of the earlier, one of the we'll see, things like click something. through at the, beginner, at the beginning, if these don't apply, talk to your kid's school. Um, but I, it's a good idea, and I will add that into each one of these. Because there might be so different do things to do, depending on which of those things are... It's not really. It's, it's if it's not special ed or a special education issue, you just need to talk to the school about oh, it. And that's easy. Yeah. So I can add that in. Now you mentioned that it's a federal law that governs in this area. Yes. How much would this vary from state to state then? 
federal law? It's practically the same. States have their own kind of notice and um, submission requirements. How long it takes for the school to get back to you, what type of you know hearing timeline there is, but the content of what due process is about, it's about placement, identification, or services. Um, so it would be transferable from state to state. Where do they file this and where are the hearings held? So they file it, that's at the very end, um, that has an yes. explanation. They're supposed to give one copy to the school principal and one copy to the superintendent. And then the hearing, I'm not actually totally sure about where the hearing would be. Um, in Chicago, for example, it's at the CPS building on South Dearborn. So the, potentially the district office. For smaller districts, I'm not totally sure. So you mentioned put your documents, if you have other documents, like supporting, do you have them, like they have to list the document, like I have yeah. uh, notes from my child's teacher, so they say what they have and then they attach it? Yeah, so okay. there's, and there's actually a part on the form, in this case it didn't come up because I didn't say that there were any documents, but there's a learn more that says here's how I should, um, well, here's what my answer should look like, exhibit A, Johnny's report card, exhibit B, a note from Johnny's psychologist saying he needs you're supposed to list that in the space where you can type, and then it'll put that in the document. Okay. And then you would attach those things with it. Cool. Great. Great. Great.